Um, hey guys, I just, um, with the confusion last week, um, I just wanted to revisit our policy uh, for covering practice. Um, you know, nothing has changed in this policy. Uh, this has been our same policy the last nine years, but I just wanted to respectfully, you know, just kind of go over it one more time with everybody on the Zoom and in this room. Um, so when out of practice, all journalists, photographers, videographers, and bloggers must only shoot tight photos and footage only displaying singular players and coaches in action, not shoot wide photos and footage of football plays, not write, publish, or post any information regarding offensive, defensive, and special team schemes and or personnel, not write, publish, or post any information regarding injuries observed at open practice not take photos or record footage of practice while outside the practice field or haluba, not interact with potential recruits, and this includes asking recruits to stop for photos and parents, and not conduct on-field interviews with any student athletes following practices without permission from me or the staff. Um, you know, if these guidelines are not fo followed, uh, we will no longer be able to open practices, but uh, appreciate, uh, Appreciate you guys in advance, and you know, thank you for your cooperation. Change Good up. afternoon and welcome uh, to our weekly Penn State football press conference. Just a reminder to turn your cell phones to vibrate off or mute. Uh, we'll start with an opening statement from Coach, and since this is our first time back in person again, we'll uh, go to Zoom first for a handful of questions and then open it up to the room. So, Coach. All right, thank you, uh, Greg. Appreciate it. Um, like always, I want to thank everybody for coming out and covering Penn State football, whether in person or on Zoom. Uh, obviously excited about the opportunity, you know, kind of strange, obviously opening on a Thursday. Uh, so we kind of catch our catch ourselves kind of talking on different days of the week. Um, but it's been our our normal routine, which has been nice. It also allowed us to come into camp a little bit earlier. Um, so I like I like opening on a Thursday. It also gives you some advantages uh, going into week two as well. So should be a should be a great environment um, really looking forward to this opportunity for our players um, you know one of the interesting things that's been talked about a lot but I thought I would hit it one more time is Penn State will open Big Ten action on the road uh, not only for the seventh straight season uh, but the 12th time in 13 years uh, so I wanted to kind of reinforce that again talking specifically about Purdue uh, got a ton of respect for Coach Brom and what he's done in his six years at Purdue and really what he's done overall in his career. Obviously, um, got a ton of respect for what he's done on offense, uh, his offensive mind, uh, what he's been able to do really kind of throughout his, his entire career. Uh, on offense specifically, you know, uh, Brian Brom, uh, has the title as offensive coordinator. Obviously, those two work closely. Uh, guys that jump out to us, obviously, is Aiden O'Connell, uh, six-year quarterback there. Uh, broke the Purdue completion percentage record at 72%. And I don't care if you're throwing on air, that's, that's impressive. Uh, tight end Payne Durham, uh, I think led him in, in receivers, led him in receptions. And then obviously Brock Thompson had a huge bowl game for them and, and obviously coming into the season uh, is going to be somebody that we're going to have to be aware of. On defense, Ron English, I've known Ron for a long time. Like Ron a lot, got a ton of respect for him. Uh, he's got a long career uh, as a defensive coordinator, now at Purdue, San Jose State, Louisville, uh, and at Michigan as a defensive coordinator. You know, something that we've seen on tape from them as well as things that we've, we've seen last year that we've spent a ton of time working on uh, and going to need to be prepared for that uh, is cover zero. We've spent a ton of time on that uh, this, this training camp, uh, really in the spring as well. 
um, and we're expecting and, and, and ready to uh, attack cover zero. I think that'd be a big part of what they do. Um, you talk about personnel, Jalen Graham, their linebacker number six, is the guy that really jumps off the tape uh, for us, a young man out of Detroit, Michigan, a senior. Uh, Cam Allen, the safety, and then defensive tackle, uh, Branson Dean as well. So those are the three guys that jump out to us. Obviously, there's other guys as well. And then on special teams, uh, Coach Maslowski comes in as a special teams coordinator his first year, but he does have history uh, with Coach from Western Kentucky. Um, they got all four starters back. Obviously, the one that really jumps out at you, you know, in terms of uh, his resume is Charlie Jones, the transfer from Iowa, who was the Big Ten returner of the year in 21. So, uh, tremendous opportunity, also tremendous challenge, uh, being on the road uh, to open the season, Big Ten, Thursday night, blackout, all those types of things. Uh, but I've been pleased with our preparation so far. Obviously, today's practice will be really important and then uh, do a great job on what we consider Thursday and Friday and then, and then get on the road to travel. So uh, appreciate you guys being here and open up the questions. We will start with Rich Scarcell from the Reading Eagle and then Mark Wogenrich from SI.com. Rich? Good morning, James. How are you? Good, Rich. How are you, buddy? I'm good. James, you uh, always talk about positivity. So why do you think your team will be better this season than they were the last two years? I think the biggest thing that I've, I've, it's been pretty consistent message. Uh, I think all preseason is I just think we're back uh, in more of a similar role than we've been in terms of depth. We got much more depth um, than we had in the previous two years for a number of reasons. Obviously the COVID year, uh, we lost some players um, based on you know, some decisions uh, that were made in the conference. Uh, and then obviously this year, uh, excuse me, this past year, um, you know, you look at our depth at the quarterback position in terms of proven commodities or, or guys that, you know, we felt were, um, you know, ready to play in Big Ten games. We just were in a much different position, defensive tackle depth, which was a problem last year after losing P.J., <coughs> and then quarterback depth as well. So um, that's probably the biggest thing that jumps out to me. But again, you know, we got to go out and do it. Mark Wogan, RichSI.com, then Frank Bodani from New York Daily Record. Hi, James. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, thanks. You've mentioned a lot about Sean Clifford in the second year uh, with Mike Hirsich and their offense together. Where is Sean at? this year going into this game physically in terms of things like physical characteristics, arm strength, accuracy, mobility, that sort of thing. Yeah, he's, he's, he's healthy and, and a hundred percent. Um, he's had a really good off season. I think him and Mike are really on the same page in terms of, um, first Mike really kind of understanding what Sean's strengths are and being able to play to those, those strengths. Uh, and then also Sean being able to anticipate and got a good understanding of, of what Mike's going to do and why. Uh, he's been really valuable in the quarterback room as well in terms of just their dialogue, questions that are asked um, that, that probably the rest of the quarterbacks in the room have questions about as well or just things uh, in more depth, you know, in more depth. So I think that's that's been really valuable. But I think they're – their uh, relationship as well as their familiarity with each other, I think, is, is going to be valuable, and we're going to need it in, in game one. Frank Bodani, York Daily Record. Then we'll go to Mike Gross. Hey, good morning, James. Um, hey, hey, Frank. Hi. Can you explain a little bit now where the season's ready to start, exactly how the two freshmen have changed not just the running back room, but maybe your running game possibilities, your look, what you have to work with compared to last year? Yeah, I think a, a couple things. Um, you know, obviously, again, I don't want to keep saying this to you guys, but you know, it's it's one thing to do it in practice; it's another thing to do it in in Big Ten games under the lights and things like that. Although I think they're prepared for that. Having them here in the spring, I think, was helpful for that. Um, but I think they both have the ability to to make big plays. I mean, it's pretty well documented that. Nick is big and strong and fast and has a chance to go 80 yards uh, at, at, any, at any point in the game. 
Um, and to be honest with you, you know, I think, you know, the guy that, you know, maybe, you know, to everybody probably but him, you know, the surprise of, of the training camp, um, you know, was, was, was Fat Man, you know, was, is what we call him. I don't know if you guys know that's his nickname or not, but, but Katron, um, he probably was the surprise at camp in terms of his production uh, and big play ability as well. A little bit of a different style than Nick, but both big, strong, powerful backs that, that can make you miss um, and break tackles. And, and both have seemed to do a really good job with understanding offense, understanding defenses and pressures and protections and all those types of things. And then Kevon, a, a year older and more experienced. So, you know, that group, as well as the guy that, you know, people aren't talking about that we also have a ton of confidence and faith in uh, is Devin Ford as well, who will also have a significant special teams role too. So um, feel good about the group, but I just think we have a chance, um, you know, this year to, to create some more explosive plays in the running game, which, which we were lacking last year. And that starts up front with, with how we're able to block and, and communicate and uh, impact the line of scrimmage. Uh, but then that's also, you know, having backs prepared and ready to, to make that defender that is not blocked miss or bro break tackles and, and be able to create the big plays, which are, which, are, which are obviously needed. Mike Gross, Lancaster Newspapers, then Donnie Collins. Good morning, James. How are you? Good, Mike. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, Jeff Brom, I, I sort of think of him as uh, – one of the group of sort of passing game gurus nationally, maybe with Kiffin and Sark whoever else, Sarkeesian. What about him, uh, what sets him apart within that group for you? Uh, what does he do that's so hard to deal with? He seems to be able to crank it out year after year. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is is being able to push the ball down the field. You know, they, they do a really good job of, of taking shots um, vertical passing game is going to be a big part of, of what they do and, and how they do it. Um, you know, but also obviously having the ability to, to throw for a high percentage as well, which, which is what I kind of opened the press conference up with, with, you know, Aiden's, you know, statistics. Um, so, you know, I think that's probably the biggest thing that I think we're going into this game with is, you know, with the mentality and understanding that we are going to have to be able to stop uh, the vertical passing game and the shots down the field. You know, everybody's trying to find ways to, to be explosive. Uh, we'd like to be able to do it both in the run game and in the pass game. I think they would like to do the same thing as well, but it's obvious, you know, watching him and, and his, his programs over the years that typically it comes, you know, in the passing game. Donnie Collins, Scranton Times Tribune, then Ben Jones. Hey, James. Hey, Donnie. Uh, you said when camp opened that you were kind of going to watch the, the the battle, but kind of replace Jordan in, in the kicking game with, with you know, the punts and kickoffs and things like that. How, how did that play out for you as, as the as the as the camp went on, and, and were you satisfied with with what developed? Yeah, I think it it played out well. You know, I think obviously. Most of you guys probably saw, you know, with Barney, you know, how that played out. But but he's earned that. You know, he's our starting punter and has and has done a really nice job. I think there's there's good competition um, at that position. I do think there's good depth at that position. Uh, but Barney will handle our punting um, and then kick off uh, the competition there um, is going to continue. So we're gonna we're gonna rotate every kick. Uh, between um, Sander and uh, and Gabe. Ben Jones, statecollege.com, then Corey Geiger. Hey, James, how's it going? Good. How are you, Ben? I'm good. I'm good. Um, away from your program, Ricky and Brent are coaching against each other on Friday, which I'm sure is sort of a unique opportunity for you. Are you going to be able to sneak down to that at all, follow it? Have you talked to them? And sort of going off of that, are you guys going back? to a normal games week schedule and just taking Friday off or, or how is that working? Yeah, no, Friday will be a work day for us. So we'll, I don't think we're going to get back until about 4 a.m. Um, so our guys will go to afternoon classes and then Friday will be our, our normal Sunday. Um, so we're able to get ahead 
Uh, Saturday will be their, their off day. Um, Sunday will kind of be a bonus Sunday, which we'll get a little bit further ahead um, you know, than we normally could on, on a Sunday. So that'll be a, no, a different type of Sunday. And then, and then from that point on, get, you know, get into a normal work week from that point. But yeah, Friday um, we'll, we'll practice and, and we'll be working all day. It kind of reminds me of my days. I remember you know, being in the NFL and you play a Monday night football game and you wouldn't get back till five o'clock in the morning. You just literally walk directly into the offices. Um, you know, it'll, be, it'll be similar to that. So the night games obviously cause some challenges. Uh, we have school the next day, um, but we'll, we'll treat Friday as a Sunday for us, and then Saturday will be the off day, and then go from there. Corey Geiger, DK Pittsburgh. Oh, and, and, and no, because of that, I, I, I won't be going to the game. I think, I think a decent number of the wives are going um, you know, to, to show support. Kind of a unique experience, obviously. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of the wives and the kids are going. They all kind of grew up together, so you know, pretty cool opportunity to get everybody together. D uh, Corey Geiger, DK Pittsburgh Sports, and then John McGonigal. Good morning, James. Can you share anything about the process you went through with your offensive line during the off season to improve? Was it personnel, scheme, situational? Anything? Anything that you went through specifically with the processes? Yeah, not really, Corey. Um, you know, I think it's been similar how it's been in the past. Obviously, you know, like I had mentioned, I think there's there's some things that we were able to do, um, you know, from an analyst standpoint um, that we hadn't been able to do in the past. Where now now Trout's got somebody to to bounce ideas off of, and uh, in the meeting room, you know, kind of you know, go through what we need to do from a skill perspective, from a fundamental perspective. Uh, that old line position can be a lonely position and to have somebody that's experienced to bounce ideas off, I think has been really valuable, you know, and a lot of times it's, it's really not anything different. It's just to kind of reinforce what you already know. Um, and then I think there's some things that, you know, I've mentioned before, I think there's some things that we can do to help the old line. One of the big ones is obviously uh, the investment uh, in the running game and the recruit recruitment of the running game uh, with the two freshman backs. Obviously, so far, have shown us that they may be able to help with that. So, so you're not one-dimensional, and you can take some pressure uh, off of your passing game and your and your pass protection, uh, and then be able to you know do do as as much of those things as you possibly can, whether it's move the pocket. You know, whether it is the screen game, uh, all these different things that we know obviously, you know, can, can help your offensive line out, um, you know, besides, you know, your, your normal development and fundamentals and technique. But, but it's, been, it's been emphasized. And again, you know, I'm going to leave that up to you guys to, to tell me, which I know you clearly will, uh, how, we're, how we're playing in that area. Go to John McGonigal at Penn Live, and then we'll open it up to questions here in the room. So raise your hand, and we'll get a mic to you. Hey, James, how are you? Good. How are you? Good, good. Um, hey, in regards to Purdue's tempo and the number of plays that they try to run, uh, how much of a challenge will that be you know, for your defense and defensive line specifically in that 2D? Well, a couple things. That's where the depth is important, right? Um, the other thing, you know, obviously that we've discussed is, you know, um, having an offense that's able to show all these different things. You know, all the way back to my time at Vanderbilt, that was something that was really important to me is to be able to have uh, offensive, defensive units that, that play complementary football. And that's not just on game day. That is being able to line up in sets, whether it's spread four wides, whether that is, um, you know, two backs, I say two backs because I know the, the fullback mafia will come alive you know, when I say that. But when I say two backs, I'm talking about the H back, you know, 12 personnel that can, that can line up in those types of roles for you. Um, but now your defense, it's not like they're facing an offense all, all spring and all camp that is really only one dimensional. Um, and now they're, they're put in a challenging situation if, if you play a 
power style offense or a true spread style offense, and they're not getting you know uh, parts of that. So when it comes to tempo, we do enough of that on offense, and we've had some tempo periods as well, you know, that I think have been been valuable. Have been valuable from that that perspective. So. Uh, we understand you know, what they'd like to do. Obviously, we've studied a lot. I think one of the things you have to do um, is, is be able to watch TV copies as well because when you just watch the coaches' copies, those things are all cut up, so it doesn't really give you a, a good understanding of the flow uh, and the speed. Uh, and then there's also some of the analytics, you know, stuff that we use where they you can tell you you know uh, on average they're snapping the ball you know at, at this amount of time on the clock so we use all that um but but we've also done some good versus good during training camp tempo periods where you know we're really trying to stress that so i think i think we've done what we need to do to be prepared but we still got to go out and do it on a game one and i think we all you know, watched college football, you know, last weekend, and a lot of things show up that traditionally show up in early games, right? Um, 12 guys on the field or 10 guys on the field or pre-snap and post-snap penalties or ball security, you know, things that you work really hard to try to make sure that those things don't show up in, in your early games. Poor tackling, you know, things like that that have become challenging in, in, in the way college football is built and structured now. Neil's head was on a swivel there when you mentioned the fullback, James. Uh, oh, he's part of that group I mentioned. Yeah, he's hey, part of that group. James, have you uh, made decisions on which true freshmen are going to green light, I, I guess is what you call it, and is that info that you're comfortable sharing with us? Yeah, so we are, but I don't know if there's a ton of value. So I met with those guys last week, but I don't know if there's a ton of value in, in sharing it with you right now. And the reason I said that is because I met with them again yesterday and I said, Let, let's just be perfectly clear, just because you've been given the green light, um, if you're not showing us you're ready against Purdue, you're not playing, you know, or you've been given a yellow last week, but then all of a sudden the lights come on for you and you're doing some really good things, and now you're trending towards being a green. And that's really a very fluid, um, that's a very fluid kind of conversation throughout the year. Um, obviously, there gets to a point you know, about midseason where you kind of got to make some decisions one way or another. Either, either you're moving ahead and playing guys, um, or you're going to try to use the four game model and, and saving guys. The challenge is for all these guys that are. 18 for the most part, they're not really, you know, built to see the big picture. And they all just want to be able to play so they can say they played as true freshmen. And I get that, but we've all also had guys that have done that. And then at the end of the year, they're like, well, if I knew it was going to play out the way it played out, I, I'd, I'd like to have the year back and maybe make a different decision. So I just try to keep talking to these guys, um, if not every week, at least every other week, kind of see where we're at um, and to be able to gauge that and to be able to monitor that uh, and be on the same page. But it's fluid. There are some guys that we have tagged as green right now, but, but I, I don't know if they're going to see week one action. James, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good. I want, Brennan took my question, so this is my backup question. Uh, I wanted to ask you, now that you've had a whole month of August to look at guys like Chop and Hunter Norzad, who are a little bit of late arrivals, what have you learned about them? And then one more, Smith Vilbert, the last time we saw him, he had a pretty nice game, or at least a nice half, in the Outback Bowl, but your defensive end room looks like it's pretty deep. What have you seen from his offseason? Yeah, so with, with Chop, um, you know, we, we obviously had high expectations of, of who and what he could be for us. Um, and he's really come in and adjusted well. And um, I know the coaches have fallen in love with him and his teammates have as well. He's just got a good way about him. Uh, and he's really, really brought a lot to our team and, and specifically for our defense. So he'll play a lot. Uh, you'll see him play a lot, um, you know, whether it is rotating in or whether it's starting. You know, we'll see how that, that plays out. But he's going to play a lot of football for us. There's no doubt about that. Uh, when it comes to Hunter, probably similar situation. A uh, guy that, that 
I, I would say both of those guys, whether they're starters or not, will play starter reps. Um, you know, right now we look at Hunter being able to play both guards um, and center. We probably won't ask him to do all those things in game one, but he will play. Um, our plan is to play him starter reps. Um, you know, at both guards, we'd like to be able to do that a little bit more on the offensive line. Is be able to get guys, um, you know, at least a series in the game in the first half, and hopefully the second half, um, for a couple things to to allow those guys to gain experience, but also to give our starters a blow that should ho hopefully help us in the fourth quarter and also. Um, you know, late in the season, keep guys as fresh as we possibly can. So a little bit more of a rotation. Um, I know we haven't done that a lot in the past, but I would also say I don't know if we've been in this position in terms of uh, from the first team to the second team not being as, as significant of a drop off. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. Uh, uh, and then Smith, you know, there's there's uh, obviously a lot to be excited about, you know, based on your, your question about how we ended last season. Um, but we'll we'll just see how that plays out as the season goes on. Tommy. James, how many wide receivers can you trust right now to put out there on the field? And how deep do you want that wide receiver rotation to be this season? Yeah, I th that's a that's a fair question. Um, you know, I'd like to say that we're at six. Uh, but I don't. I'm not really necessarily you know, sure on that. Um, you know, kind of looking at it, we'll see how this week plays out to finalize that. But we'd really like to have a two deep, um, legitimate two deep at at every position. And I, I wouldn't necessarily say we're there. Um, I'd say there's probably five guys that we feel comfortable putting out there with maybe the six guy being right on the edge that we need to see something over these first couple of weeks of the season in practice and in games to, to feel that way. But, um, you know, but, you know, that you'll see, you know, with our starters, most of those guys will be tap guys, not rotational guys. And what I mean by that is they will stay in until they need a blow. And when they tap their helmet, um, the backup will come in for him, give him a blow for a few plays. We got to be organized with that because sometimes that happens when Mike wants to go tempo. So, you know, we just got to make sure we're organized. And that takes some time to kind of get that worked out because you call a tempo play and then you sub and the official holds you up. Um, obviously not, not ideal, not what you're looking for. So we'll work through that. But, um, but I think we're, you know, we're in a pretty good place there. We just, we, we need, we need one more of these young guys to, to really come on for us. T. Frank. Hey, James, over here. Over here. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, kind of going off the last two questions. You've talked in the past about depth and competition, uh, specifically at the defensive line and the interior positions on offense. Do you feel that the depth you've had has created competition to raise the level of not just the starters, but the players beneath them, and finally create that sort of environment you're looking for to you know, raise the overall level of your team. Yeah, and I and I think that's that's really what we've we've had in the past, and I think we're back to that is which is kind of the message that I've been trying to kind of get across is I think we're back to that type of depth, which to your point does two things, right? It allows you to it allows you to have a rotation of getting guys on the field, keeping guys fresh, those types of things. Uh, but the other thing it does is it, it creates some pressure on guys. If, if you know you got a legitimate guy behind you that is pushing for your job every single day, that, that brings out the best in you. And to, to, for us, what I typically like to do, say we don't have a true too deep. Um, say, you're, say you got two spots. Say they're defensive ends. Um, and it, say you have them ranked one, two, three, four. I want the fourth guy behind the first guy and the third guy behind the second guy. Why? Because if the first is who he should be, he, he shouldn't need a guy behind him pushing him. Um, obviously, you'd love to have it where you got a legitimate guy pushing everybody uh, at every single position. But if you don't, I want to make sure that two's got the number three right behind him pushing him every single day to be the best and competing for that job where you hope your one is, is an established guy and is mature enough to know how to work, whether there's somebody behind him or not. 
in a perfect world, um, you got you basically have two starters and two backups that you feel like you know that you can play with and win with, and there's not a drop off to a four. If that makes sense, I hope I explained that correctly. Neil. Well, thanks for the fullback love, both of you. Um, You're welcome. Yeah. Um, how much did last year going to Wisconsin help you in a week like this, where you have a tough? Uh, Big Ten uh, road opener, and also is is Veo solidified as the backup quarterback? So uh, two 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 good questions. Yeah, I think last year going to Wisconsin um, has has put us in position to be prepared with our returners to understand, you know, uh, what we need to do to be successful. Obviously, going on the road at Wisconsin is is a big deal. Going on the road at Purdue. Um, is a big deal. Going on the road 12 out of the last 13 years um, also also helps with that. Um, so yeah, again, we got to do it this year. Um, but there is experience with our team, uh, with our team, you know, going on the road. Um, and then your second question, which I know everybody will start texting right away and stop listening to me. Um, Drew Alar is is our backup quarterback uh, for Week One. Um, that'll be that's not a set in stone thing for the entire year. That'll continue to be a competition and fluid, but Drew Alar is, is the backup quarterback. Oh. No other questions matter. Everybody's heads down, <laughs> tweeting, texting. <laughs> hey James, how are you? Good, how are you? Um, we had Sean this morning, and he was really um, complimentary of Harrison Wallace and the strides that he's made in camp. Uh, you know, speaking of that uh, wide receiver rotation, where does Harrison figure into that? And um, you know, what have you seen from him this uh, preseason camp? Yeah, he's one of those guys that I think has earned the coaches um, as well as his teammates' trust. A guy that that we expect to play and, and play a lot, um, and he's right on that fringe in terms of viewing him, you know, as a starter. Um, in terms of reps and in terms of rotation, very similar to maybe how we talked about Hunter and Chop. Um, so he's done a nice job. He's got a lot of ability. Uh, he's a really good kid, um, you know, and I think, I think he's got a chance to be one of those guys where maybe not a whole lot of people are talking about him right now, but I think he's got a chance to be one of those guys that, you know, by the middle of the season or end of the season, not only the fans and the media are talking about him, but our opponents are saying, hey, this is a guy we better, we better be aware of. Mike? Um, I'll, I'll bite. Uh, why is uh, Drew the backup this week? Because uh, when we take all of the, all of the information, uh, coach's opinion, you know, based on their gut and experience, um, data, from everything that we keep track of, um, that we feel like you know, you know, Drew has has earned that that opportunity in week one. Um, but again, you know, uh, I think we all we all remember last year as well. And and Veyer, what, and, I, and just so you guys all know, because I, I messed this up for a while, uh, it's Veyer, not Veyu. Um, yeah, I saw your eyebrows go up. Yeah. Um, he, he was the third string quarterback last year and ended up being a second team quarterback and came in and, and did a did a great job for us so um, but taking everything into consideration um, you know the coaching staff you know felt like this was the right decision obviously they're tough conversations to have we sat down with everybody and uh, did it with each one of the quarterbacks met with them one on one and and communicated how and why Audrey Sorry. Um, what are the challenges, like you said, with Drew trying to get him up to speed? Because I asked Sean earlier today, how do you try and get those young guys ready? And he said things just as much as, hey, this is Tuesdays we watch this film, Wednesday. What are some of the things that you want to see Drew do this week and that you think he can gain from that role? Yeah, I think, um, you know, obviously, you know, we, I think we did a pretty good job, you know, all training camp of getting all four of those guys work. You know, we also had a few days where we, we held Sean for, for a number of reasons that allowed all of them to get, you know, reps, you know, maybe up a spot than where they were on the depth chart. Um, you know, because, again, it's one thing to do, do it with the fours or the threes or the twos, and it's another thing to do with the ones. Um, so that, that was helpful. 
Um, but yeah, I think, you know, Sean, you know, where he's at academically, where he's at athletically, I think he told me the other day, I think he's literally, I'm not just saying this, I think he's a TA in one of his classes. I mean, uh, he's 45 years old, experienced teaching classes, you know, and, and doing the same thing in, in Lash, uh, in the Lash football building, uh, with a lot of our players on offense. And, um, I think he embraces that role and, it's been it's been really good, but yeah, Drew, Drew needs to learn from from Sean, and and so does so does CV, and and so does Bo, uh, and it's a really good environment with that with that whole room, and and we've worked hard at that, but we need to continue to do that, uh, continue to work hard with the chemistry of that room, and those guys you know continue to prepare and invest the way they need to, to be prepared you know when their number gets called, and that's that's really all of them. That's one of those coach coach speak things that 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 we all say, and I talked to the team about it the other day. Um, you better prepare as if you're the starter. Um, that's easier said than done. You know, the, obviously the example that we use all the time is Jan Johnson. You know, who went from a scout team tight end to the starting middle linebacker in in, a, in just a matter of months. Um, you know, so. We just try to use that example as much as we can because if everybody approaches it that way, then it's going to make them better and it's going to make our team better. Last question to Daniel Gallon. Hey, James, uh, over here. <clears throat> um, you touched on punter and kickoff specialists earlier, but um, can you share uh, the competitions at kicker, middle linebacker, uh, and at the guard spots? Any decisions made right now? Now, when you say um, kicker, what are you talking about field goals? You Field goal, extra point. Um, I know that Sander and, and Jake had both been competing there. Yeah, so Jake is is our field goal kicker. Um, he's earned that throughout camp. He's had a really strong camp. I'm I'm really proud of him. I used him as an example with the team the other day. Talking about a guy, you know, in today's day and age, you know, with the transfer portal, here he is as a guy who's a two year starter for us, and then um, ends up you know losing his starting role and 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 doesn't just run to the transfer portal at first sign of adversity stays and sticks it out and here he is uh, one of our leaders on our team and has had a really good camp I think he's going to have a big big year for us and I'm, I'm really proud of him for a lot of reasons for a lot of reasons um, you asked about guard um, we really see all three of those guys as starters in in Landon in Sal and in Hunter and try to play all three of those guys uh, with starter reps. And JB was really trending and we had a lot of confidence with JB. He had an injury that kept him out for some time, which has kind of set him back, but we need to get him going again because we're going we're gonna to need him at some point this year. Um, and then what was the other position you asked about? Middle linebacker. Yeah, so nothing's really changed from the last time we talked. Um, both of those guys will play, but Elsden Elsden will be the will be the starter. Um, but both of those guys will play significant significant reps in the game. Him and Kobe. Thank you very much, Coach. All right. Just thanks, a reminder: guys. we have uh, practice availability uh, for B-roll and photos at 4:50 today. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Thank you.